All right, welcome back. In my last video, I introduced our first example of a geometric series, and in this video, I want to talk more specifically about what a geometric series looks like in general and the form that it takes. So in general, a geometric series has the form a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus a times r cubed, etc. And we write this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a times r to the n. So notice we're starting this summation at zero. We often start it at one, but we wanna get that first term, which is just a, so we're starting it at zero. So the first term, a times r to the zero, is just a. Then the second term is a times r to the one, that's our a times r. And our third term would be a times r squared, etc. So in this formula, a is just a real number. It's a constant or a scalar that's being multiplied by r to the n. Then we call r the common ratio, and this is because it's the ratio of subsequent terms. So if we look at any two terms in this series and take their ratio, we're going to get r. So if we do a times r to the k plus 1 divided by a times r to the k, where k is just one of the indices, I can rewrite r to the k plus 1 as r to the k times r, and then I have an a times r to the k in both the numerator and the denominator, which will cancel, leaving me with r. So calling it the common ratio is just something we do to give us a language to talk about it. As a comment too, both a and r should be non-zero. If they were zero, we wouldn't really have a sequence to deal with, so we just assume that a and r are non-zero. Okay, so let's revisit an example we've talked about before. Let's look at the infinite series, which is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one half to the n power. And this is equal to, if we write out the terms, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, etc. This series is geometric with a equals 1 and r equals 1 half. So we have 1 times 1 half to the n, and this matches the form for a geometric series. So just notice that this is the first geometric series or sequence we looked at, but we're starting at n equals 0. So in the last video, I filled in a square, but we started with 1 half. This just has one as the first term, and then we do one half, one fourth, one eighth, etc. So it's basically the same, just slightly different, and I wanna point out that we didn't have that one in the previous example I did in another video. Some other examples of what a geometric series might look like is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of three times five to the n, or it could be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over pi times three halves to the n, so both a or r could be fractions. And then one last example, sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative two to the n. So r can be negative, a could also be negative, but a here in this example is just one. So really anything in the form a times r to the n with a sum from n equals zero to infinity counts as a geometric series. So what I wanna do now is give you the rules for how we can tell if a geometric series converges or diverges. Understanding why this is the way it is takes a little bit of time, and I have a separate video on that topic, but I want to make sure you feel equipped to do some example problems that involve geometric series, so I'm going to give you the rules now and go through a couple examples in this video. Without watching the other video to show where these rules come from, they might feel like they come out of nowhere, but I'm going to give them to you now anyway. So remember, geometric series take the form of the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the n. We say that the geometric series converges when the absolute value of r is less than one. Specifically, in this case, we can conclude the infinite series is equal to a over one minus r. This is super powerful because if I give you a geometric series and you notice that the absolute value of the r value is less than one, you can tell me what the infinite sum converges to. You can tell me what it is equal to what the solution is just by using a and r in this formula. However, whenever the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, we get divergence. So the geometric series diverges in these cases. So to wrap up this video, I'm just going to go through some examples of geometric series and talk about their convergence and divergence. So first, let's look at some series written with summation notation. So first I have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of eight times two over seven to the nth power. And then I also have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative five to the n. 
So both of these are geometric series because they're in the form a times r to the n. For the first series, a is 8, and r is 2 sevenths. Then we can talk about whether this series converges or diverges. We always want to look and see if the r value is between negative 1 and 1, because if the absolute value is less than 1, meaning it's between negative 1 and 1, then we have convergence. So 2 sevenths fits in this interval, and this means that the series converges. We can find what it converges to by using the formula a over 1 minus r. a is 8, r is 2 sevenths. So I have 8 over 1 minus 2 sevenths, and now I just need to simplify. So 1 minus 2 sevenths is 5 sevenths. I can multiply by the reciprocal, and I'm getting 56 over 5 is what this series converges to. Okay, let's look at the second sum. So here we have an a value of 1, since there isn't anything written on the outside of the thing to the n section, and then r is negative 5. Again, we can talk about whether this converges or diverges by looking at the r value. Here the r is negative 5, and so it falls into that absolute value of r is greater than 1 category, since it's not between negative 1 and 1. So this series diverges. Okay, let's do two more examples. This time I'm going to give you the series written out in the terms rather than using summation notation, and we will do the work to put them into summation notation. So the first sum I have is 1 plus 3 tenths plus 9 over 100 plus 27 over 1000, etc. And the second sum we'll look at is 1 over 7 minus 2 over 7 plus 4 over 7 minus 8 over 7 plus 16 over 7, etc. So because the geometric series have a first term of a, their a plus ar plus ar squared, we can just look at the first term of this sum to find the a value. So here, 1 is going to be our a value, and then I'm noticing that 3 over 10 is my r value. We can check this because if we do 1 times 3 over 10, that's a times r, we're getting the second term. Moreover, 3 over 10 squared gives me 9 over 100, and 3 over 10 cubed gives me 27 over 1000. So I can write this out as one more step before we put it into sums, but I know that a is 1 and r is 3 tenths, so I can write the sum as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3 tenths to the n power. Then, because 3 tenths is in between negative 1 and 1, this series will converge, and so I can write this final solution to this sum as a over 1 minus r. So I'm having 1 over 1 minus 3 tenths, that's 1 over 7 tenths, which is 10 over 7 when we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, this next one's a little more complicated. I'm noticing that it's oscillating, so the first value is positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, etc. So this tells me that my r value is going to be negative. Again, the first term of the sequence tells me my a value, so I know that all of these have a 1 7th in them. So I'm just going to rewrite them as 1 7th times something, so I have 1 7th times 1, minus 1 7th times 2, plus 1 7th times 4, etc. And then I'm going to play around with that part in the parentheses to determine my r. To really emphasize that the r is the thing that's changing because it's negative, I'm going to make all of the subtraction signs into addition signs by putting the negative inside the parentheses. And then I'm noticing that these are just powers of negative 2. So I have negative 2 to the 0, negative 2 to the 1, negative 2 squared, negative 2 cubed, and negative 2 to the 4th. Notice that those odd powers are negative, and the even powers become positive. So this has an a value of 1 over 7, and an r value of negative 2. And we can write it in the summation notation as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 7 times negative 2 to the n. And because negative 2 is not in the negative 1 to 1 range, I know that this series diverges. Okay, so those are just a few examples to get you used to geometric series. With some practice and some more examples, I think you'll start feeling really confident. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.